So starting with the second part of our segment for basic airbrushing, what we're going to do, we're going to do a nice sort of nice little exercise. Um, basically, um, you first off, you've got your um, you've got your new airbrush. Um, where do you start? I know in the instructions I'll go off and go. Let's do just do some squiggly lines and figure of eights on a piece of paper. Um, but really, that doesn't sort of. Um, Get you sort of learning anything really i mean you want to learn a little bit and sort of get used to using and getting the control of the airbrush so what we're going to do i'm going to start off with some simple paint mixing um now when it comes to thinners i do have a tutorial on, on the genesis models website of how to make your own homebrew thinners um, you can go off and buy all the different manufacturers of paints as you can see behind me with their pacific thinners um, but i have found that this little homebrew finish does work for pretty much nine times out of ten most manufacturers out there um, so go check out that video and what you want to do is let's just pour in a little bit of thinners right only a little bit we really don't need a lot for this job at all we're just doing a nice little exercise and i'm just going to go off and i'm using um vallejo paint vallejo paints are a pretty good um starter sort of paint range to get into they've got sort of pretty good color matches but they're really nice and easy to use and quite forgiving paints right you always want to give them a good 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 shake right so yeah, nice good shake and then um, I'm just I mean I'm using light sea blue just to sort of start off really the colors don't matter at this stage at all all right and what we're gonna do we're gonna drop in a couple of drops into here all right and what we're after is we're sort of guesstimating around about a 50 50 mix now don't particularly worry about this too much i mean it can cause you problems with the paint being too thick or too thin but it really is something that you sort of gauge over time and get a bit of experience in doing it um, you know just try not to get frustrated it will come to you over time and then we're just going to use a clean paintbrush and we're going to mix these two colors all together um, now it's good practice to make sure that you always add thinners first and then add paint and then mix right and the reason for this is um, when you pour in the thinners right although the color cup is a reservoir in itself just down here in the needle end there's like a little little reservoir and what you want to do is you want to have the thinners go into that little reservoir first because when we sort of spray out our paint to start off with the first thing that's going to come out is um, some thinners rather than if we put the paint in first we'd have thick paint in this reservoir which then you'd blow that out first and you'd have thick paint which then could sort of give you problems um drawing needles and all those kind of things um just using a kitchen paper towel which is you know if you've just started you know getting your hands on kitchen paper towel is a good thing for cleaning stuff up and cleaning airbrushes with so good idea to keep them then what i'm going to go off and do now is i'm, I'm just using a two penny two pence just here this is going to be a bit of masking for us um, for our little exercise anything that's circular you could use um, a pot of paint or something but then you're going to spray your paint pot so you probably don't want to but a two pence piece is rather fine so what we're going to do we're just going to just on our kitchen paper towel sort of spray a bit out see how it's feeling and whatnot maybe get out a fresh one because this is the first time i'm assuming you're using the airbrush right so on a kitchen paper towel you're basically pressing down just gives you that although we've got paint in this color cup right i mean nothing else is coming out it's just um air but when we pull that trigger back we start to get paint right now one thing you really want to sort of try and sort of get used to is what i like to call the biting point and that is where we press down the trigger and as we slowly bring back the trigger boom right that point in which paint comes out and that point in which as far as you brought back that's your biting point just like on a car um, you know as you pull the clutch back the engine activates as we pull the trigger back that point in which paint just starts to come out that's our biting point that's what we want to control we want to control that point in which the paint comes out and knowing that if we pull back a little bit further 
on the trigger, more paint will come out. But if we just hold that biting point, we'll have that little bit of paint come out and then we can start doing lines like this. Right? But for this little exercise, what we want to do is have our little bit of a marker there, a little mask, masking up sort of thing. And what we're going to do, we're just going to just lightly sort of spray across. We're sort of spraying at a nice little distance of maybe um, six inches away from the piece of paper. And what we're doing is just getting that biting point, that point in which paint just comes out and we're just very lightly moving across the piece of paper and just generally getting the first um, sort of almost half of the piece of paper having this light mist of blue, just a nice sky blue. Now what you've got to be careful is, this is probably what you're going to do when you first start out is, is you're going to probably pull back the trigger all the way and then just a load of paint comes out. Right now, at a distance, okay, that gives us really sort of great coverage. Loads of paint comes out, but when we want to do close-up work, loads of paint comes out and it just goes everywhere, and we it, it doesn't have a spray pattern. It goes all cobwebby and stuff. Um, well, anyway, that's our first colour. So what we want to do now is do our first colour change. Right now, colour changes. We can come back to our homebrew thinners. We pour this in. Now this is a quick colour change, it's not like cleaning the airbrush. We've poured some nice thinners just in there. What we're going to do, we're going to get um, our kitchen paper towel, pinch the end. We're going to then very slowly push down the trigger and slowly pull back the trigger until it starts to bubble inside of um, the colour cup end. And what this is doing is basically just churning that um, thinners over, bubbling it up basically cleaning the internals for us for a nice quick color change all right and just do it lightly if we pull all the way back it's really going to start to bubble up and then it's going to start spitting out and probably go in your eyes and stuff so do it very lightly now when you're also holding the airbrush try not to really sort of be like holding it really really tight and sort of really kind of pushing down really hard and pulling back really sort of take it nice and light, relax, make it easy. So we've sort of gurgled that up. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna tip, put some kitchen paper towel sort of in there, tip the airbrush upside down and clean it to come out the um, color cup end. We do this because um, we've potentially gurgled up and, and sort of brought up maybe tiny little bits of dried up paint. And if we come out the color cup end, it comes out nicely. If we try and spray it through the nozzle end, we could have little tiny bits of flaky, dried up um, paint, trying to go through this tiny 0.4 mil nozzle and potentially block up your needle and give you all sorts of problems. And you might want to do this task a few times, right? Put some thinners in, gurgle it, tip it upside down, clean it out, um, and then maybe you could sort of start spraying it through the needle end then, and basically keep spraying it through until you've got no paint coming through at all. And you've done a nice quick colour change and you're ready for your next colour. So with the next colour we're going to be using a nice bright yellow. Um, I've just used Vallejo again, then 002, um, no big deal, whatever yellow you've got. Uh, and what we're going to do now is still with our two pence piece, um, masking up this one little area here. We're going to, again, just off, off of camera, just check our flow, our spray pattern that's going on here. And it's looking good on that kitchen paper towel. Um, potential problems when mixing is um, you've either put too much paint in and what can potentially happen is um, the spray pattern will look very sort of speckly and spitty um, and you can sort of almost see the little tiny dots and that just basically means you've got too much paint. Add some thinners to thin it down. If your um, paint's coming out very sort of transparent, very sort of runny, um, you're not really getting any coverage, and maybe you're spidering too easily, probably means you've got too much thinners, so add a little bit more paint. Uh, but anyway, moving along with our little exercise, what we're gonna do now is just like we did before, we're gonna just, um, nicely six inches away and we're just going to spray across and sort of try and make a nice sort of sky sort of look maybe not as 
as much as before maybe try and control it a bit more than what we did last time with the blue and this time where our two pence is let's maybe just do some circles and sort of focus around this area just nice circles really sort of try and get some yellow down in this area and try and control it like so right and there we go and then what we can do is we can now remove our two pence piece and we've got ourselves almost like a bit of a sun thing going on there again this is just an exercise we're not doing some perfect piece of art or anything we're just getting used to using the airbrush right so now that's done what we need to do is again we need to do a nice quick color change so I've just done a quick color change and I have added a 50-50 mix of some simple um, black by Vallejo, again 057, or, or some sort of a dark color, no big deal, this is just an exercise. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna mess about with some masking. So let's get um, a plain um, piece of paper, all right? And we're just gonna now just rip this we we'll try and make it into sort of like some nice sort of patterns. We're sort of going for a bit of a mountainy thing here. So maybe try and get some peaks or something going on with it. All right, make it look a bit sort of, of interesting, nice and easy. And what we're going to do is just sort of almost just above halfway up the page, or maybe not going over our sun bit. So let's turn that over. Yeah, that should probably do okay. Right, no. Oh, actually, no, wrong side, sorry. We're not using that piece. We're going to be using um, this piece, right? And we're going to put this down almost sort of halfway. I mean, actually, I will probably turn that around as well. Just get it until you're happy. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, again, take our airbrush. We're going to get our um, kitchen paper towel. We're just going to check our flow, make sure we're flowing nicely, right? And then what we're going to do is this time we're going to come in a little bit closer. You know, we've been about six inches away, which makes things easier. Now we want to sort of get in a little bit closer. So let's get that biting point. Let's pull down the trigger. Let's sort of get that little point in which it starts to come out. And we're going to sort of follow the line. Right, while holding this down, we're going to follow the line of this piece of paper. We've just simply ripped up nice and easy. And we're just going to flow over a little bit of a mask here, all holding it down, right? And this time we've got maybe two, three inches away, right? What we may want to do is maybe do some slight sort of filling in, maybe just at the peaks just here. Maybe even sort of, I don't know, maybe go a little couple more coats. Right, and the more coats we do, the more coverage we get, the more this will look a bit blacker. Right. And then if we sort of move that away, we end up with this sort of nice mountainy looking bit. Right, and then what we can also go off and do, we can then sort of practice that little sort of technique, being a little bit closer, a little bit more by just simply, we could just rip up some more paper and just make some more sort of interesting sort of looking pieces just to sort of change things up and make things look a little bit different like so we can just add this on here and again we can just just above here just do a nice control bit of a spray like so and get all these different sort of patterns going on Right, maybe just another one just here. Right, and we're just playing around, messing around, um, trying to make a bit of a, a sort of a natural looking picture as possible, maybe. Right, but the whole point is, is we're just trying to get used to the airbrush, get control of it, and, and do something with it, and play around with it. And then, um, once you've done that, you could maybe sort of start playing around, um, sort of maybe getting a little bit sort of closer. And this is where we can sort of forget the exercise a little bit. And this is where we can sort of come in and try that biting point where the paint just comes out, right? So the paint just comes out like so, as you can just see there, maybe get you a little bit more closer on camera. We've got that little point where the paint just comes out. There's our biting point. And maybe let's just start moving 
while just holding that biting point. I'm not moving my hand anywhere on the trigger, I'm just keeping it that and I'm just moving the paint, the airbrush around, right? And you can sort of do things like, let's sort of bring the airbrush further away and see how the spray pattern gets bigger. Bring the airbrush in nice and close. And so the spray pattern just gets finer and finer. Play around with that kind of stuff. Try and remember, keep the airbrush moving. Because if we were to um, come in, pull back the airbrush, right, and hold in the same place, we get this effect, which is called spidering. It's basically where we've stayed in the same place, the paint's built up and built up and it's wet and it's wet. The air pressure then starts blowing um, the paint across and it looks like a little spider. And we call that spidering. Um, so that's why you wanna sort of keep on moving to prevent things like spidering. Because as soon as you stop, there we go, spidering. So, just practice that before you sort of touch the model. And this whole exercise has just been there so that before you go off and sort of ruin your model, you can just have a nice little practice, do a nice little sort of landscape thing, using an airbrush, practice a bit of masking and just messing about really, practicing the whole um, mixing, the 50% mixture and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, we can jump into a model. Now, if you wanna go off and jo jump into a model, I've got plenty of tutorials out there um, on things like um, pre-shading, post-shading, bleaching. You can go check them out on the Genesis Models website in the tutorial section. We've even got our step-by-steps -step where I actually kind of build a model from beginning to end. And when I get to the um, spraying stage, I'll show you how to spray up a model from beginning to end and go into more detail, more intermediate and advanced stuff. Um, but really, that's it for the second part of this segment. What we wanna do now is go off and um, go into our third part of the segment, which is um, basic cleaning and maintenance, which might sound a bit boring and you don't wanna do, but it really is important to keep your tools nice and clean, because trust me, probably like seven times out of 10, if you've got a problem with your airbrush, it's potentially because it's not clean enough. <laughs> 